Are you tired of watching the same movies over and over again on Netflix? Well, look no further because I'm Greg and here at The Binge List, we make recommendations for TV shows and movies you can access from the comfort of your own home. And Netflix has such an immense library with tons of options that are being added all the time. And it can be super difficult to find what you're looking for when you, your spouse, your kids, and possibly your three neighbors are all sharing the same account. All it does is recommend puppy dog pals. So I broke down 15 of the best lesser known movies, whether they're a little bit older, they have a cult following, or they're just not talked about for one reason or another and rank them based on my viewing experience. So stop mindlessly scrolling, stop wasting your time, and let's jump in and check out this list. First things first, I need you to say, my name is Edward Garrett and I am an idiot. Let's start our list off with a comedy, and that's Win It All, where we follow Eddie, this charming but down on his luck gambling addict who agrees to watch a duffel bag for an acquaintance of his who is going to prison for six months. Unable to resist temptation, Eddie peeks inside this bag and discovers this huge sum of cash, and then he goes and starts gambling, but with his usual luck, loses most of the money almost immediately. He tries to get his life back on track and diligently pays the money back but Michael ends up getting an early release from prison and demands his money back immediately. Desperate, Eddie resorts to high stakes gambling to raise the funds. This is not the most original film on this list. It essentially lives and dies with Jake Johnson's performance. His portrayal of Eddie's journey of self-discovery is your typical comedy movie arc. He captures this flawed personalities and moments of vulnerability though perfectly, building himself into this better person throughout the film. The authenticity and charm of his portrayal are balanced with these hilarious moments, keeping these seemingly serious situations very lighthearted and fun. And Keegan Michael Key is in this, and he's always good for some laughs. Despite its limited budget, Win It All is a fun, character driven story about redemption that has plenty of humor and drama to entertain. Mm, mm, mm. Can you just hit that on switch for me? No, 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 no. Oh, oh my god, turn it off! Oh, I'm gonna get fired again. Oh. Number two is another comedy on this list, but it is a super unique film, and that is Bad Trip. Bud and Chris, these two best friends stuck in dead end jobs, embark on this wild road trip from Florida to New York City. One aims to confess his love to his high school crush, while the other avoids his furious sister who thinks she stole her car. Through outrageous hidden camera pranks and absurd situations, their journey is filled with cringes, laughs, and unexpected consequences. Like I mentioned, this movie is super unique. It is a mashup of hidden camera pranks, it's improv skills, it's some scripted moments, and it's a feature length film narrative. The pranks are jackass like. They're performed in the public in front of these random bystanders who had no idea what's going on, so you see genuine reactions. And they were super creative, sometimes shocking and most of the time extremely funny. The buddy comedy duo of Eric Andre and Lil Ray was a duo you didn't know you needed in your life. Their ability to adapt to these real life reactions and improvised dialogue was done so well and they're so funny together. Ultimately, Bad Trip was a good mix of scripted and unscripted elements that felt really innovative with tons of humor, improvisation skills, and provided a wild, unpredictable ride. Definitely worth giving a shot. What are you still doing here? I'm always the last one here. No, I'm always the last one here. The two of them are always in this office. Let's just lock them in a room together so they can have sex with each other. When they're boning, we're free. Let's change the lane slightly here with number three, and that's with a rom-com and set it up, where we follow two overworked and underappreciated assistants, Harper, played by Zoe Deutsch, and Charlie, played by Glenn Powell, who hatch a wild plan to set up their demanding bosses in hopes of lightening their own workloads and finding some personal time. As they orchestrate this elaborate series of accidental encounters, sparks start to fly between Harper and Charlie themselves. This movie originally caught my eye because I really like the two actors in this one. Zoe Deutsch and Glenn Powell are awesome. The chemistry between them is certainly a highlight in this film, making their characters and their buddy romance fun and engaging. The film keeps the energy high almost the entire time in this film, with a few heartfelt moments and intimate moments, but it's a pretty steady stream of jokes and hilarious situations. And just the overall concept of these two assistants manipulating these overbearing bosses for personal gain added a layer of realism for most in this comedy. The film features several well-known actors and actresses, including those leads that I talked about, but also Lucy Liu, Pete Davidson, and Tay Diggs. I say this every time I talk about a rom-com, but yes, it does follow the formulaic romantic comedy structure, but it's the journey, folks. The journey is the fun part, seeing how they get to the end. So enjoy that journey with this lighthearted romantic comedy, a lot of laughs, and these two charming leads, well worth checking out. This thing, it's gonna follow you. 
somebody gave it to me and I passed it to you. From a small lane change with number three to a huge genre swap here with number four, let's talk about the psychological thriller horror it follows. Jay, a teenager navigating the anxieties of high school life, makes a fateful discovery after a sexual encounter. She's actually been cursed with this terrifying entity that's unseen, ever present, and it takes the form of somebody she knows relentlessly stalking her until it claims her life. With the chilling truth drawing in on her, Jay races against time to find a way to break this curse, turning to her friends for support while the line between paranoia and reality just blur completely. The film has a very unique concept that I've never seen in a film with a sexually transmitted curse. It just feels very original, but it's also quite unsettling. This movie almost gave me a bird box feel in it. it it feels slow, it builds up, so you have to give it follows time because it's 100% a psychological thriller, relying mostly on eerie atmospheres and the power of suggestion along with unsettling imagery rather than jump scares for the most part. They do this in the movie with great use of lighting, sound design, it builds this sense of dread and paranoia with the main character that's both visual on screen and emotionally unsettling. Maka Monroe delivers a captivating performance as Jay, depicting this transformation from this ordinary teenage girl to a state of just escalated fear and just pure desperation. So if you're in the market for a slow burning psychological horror with this unique premise, It Follows might be perfect for you. Dear Luke, we fell in love so quickly. I figured I'd write you and fill in the gaps that we didn't have time to fill. Next up is our number five pick and that is Purple Hearts. This is a Netflix original where we meet Cassie Salazar, an aspiring singer-songwriter who's struggling to afford the insulin to keep her alive. She enters into a marriage of convenience with Luke, a troubled marine about to deploy. Their conflicting personalities and values clash throughout the entirety of this film, but they do need to learn to navigate their differences through this fake relationship and fear of legal ramifications from the military. When tragedy strikes, their lives are altered and force them to come together and confront their feelings amidst this personal struggle. I will say this is far from a Shakespearean romance with plenty of things that I could harp on that probably could have been done a little bit better, but despite its flaws, I really, really enjoyed this movie. I enjoyed Sophia Carson's and Nicholas Galatine's strong performances. You see a full range of emotions from them. You see love, you see loss, success, failure, and everything really in between, offering heartwarming moments and some scenes that really hit you in the gut. And the originals from the soundtrack performed by Sophia Carson are actually really good. I have to highlight Come Back Home and I Hate the Way. These are two songs that are on my iPhone and listen to them whenever they come up, adding a cool element to the movie. Tons of love with this one. If you're a fan of romantic dramas, enjoy music-infused narratives, or appreciate heartfelt journeys with emotional highs and lows, it might be worth checking out for you. This is serious money. Do you want to double what you made? Are we stealing? Is this stealing? Feels a bit like trouble. What do you think it was going to mean working for me? My sixth pick on this list is a movie starring Andrew Garfield and Michael Shannon with 99 Homes. In this film, Dennis Nash, a single father who's recently laid off, faces eviction from his home amidst the housing crisis. Desperate to regain his home and provide for his family, he takes a job working for Rick Carver, the real estate broker who actually evicted him. As Dennis navigates the cutthroat world of foreclosures and property flipping, he must choose between staying loyal to Rick's ruthless methods or fight for what he knows is right, even if it means putting his family at risk. There are some pretty powerful performances from the two amazing actors in this one. Andrew Garfield as Dennis showcases his utter desperation and his gradual moral conflict, and Michael Shannon is equally compelling as this charismatic and somewhat evil Rick Carver. This film tackles timely issues of economic inequality, predatory lending practices during this housing crisis which makes it feel very authentic and I won't say too much but the tension builds steadily as Dennis gets deeper and deeper into Rick's operation leading to this nerve-wracking climax so if you like a powerful drama with social commentary or a suspenseful exploration of moral choices 99 homes offers a thought-provoking and impactful experience Amy I love you I'm gonna come find you the day of the monster uprising was the day I lost everyone. I don't know if everybody's gonna agree with me that my seventh pick is a hidden gem anymore, but I've talked to other people about it and they've never heard of it, so I wanna share love and monsters. This picks up seven years after a giant asteroid caused cold-blooded animals to mutate into monstrous threats. Joel lives an isolated life underground, clinging to the memory of his high school sweetheart Amy, but driven by love and hope, Joel embarks on a perilous journey across a post-apocalyptic landscape teeming with giant insects, amphibians, and these other mutated beasts. With the help of a lovable dog, 
Joel faces hilarious challenges and heart-stopping dangers as he searches for Amy and just explores this dangerous world. I really enjoy Dylan O'Brien in this type of role. He is a likable and awkward person with his unwavering determination as Joel, bringing me back to his days on Teen Wolf. This movie also has Michael Roker and Ariana Greenblatt providing this comedic support throughout the journey here. The film does balance the lighthearted humor with the genuine moments of emotion and these action packed sequences as well. Those of you that know me or watch my videos know that I love world building and this film paints a vibrant picture of this world reclaimed by nature. And the danger comes from these giant monsters that are very visually impressive and it's not just one, it's so many unique mutated species ranging from terrifying to even cutish or quirky in some cases. Not a perfect movie, but a fun, lighthearted adventure with charming and charismatic characters and a visually stunning post-apocalyptic landscape. Well worth checking out. So you gotta stand up for yourself, because once you're marked in there, Move! it will never end. My number eight pick just recently came to Netflix, and this is an intense movie that doesn't shy away from heavier subject matter. If that sounds like something you'd enjoy, Shot Caller is perfect for you. We meet Jacob, a successful businessman with this loving family who finds his life shattered when a drunk driving accident lands him in prison. To survive the brutal realities of incarceration, he's forced to join a gang and transform himself into this hardened criminal. Upon release, he gets caught up in a dangerous web of gang violence, torn between his old life and his new persona. Jacob fights for redemption while questioning everything he thought he knew about himself. The Game of Thrones star Nicola Coster Wadlow delivers a captivating performance. It was very different from any of the other roles that I've seen him in. He transforms from this family man to this ruthless inmate with complex and emotional situations. Like I mentioned, this movie takes on a lot of heavy subject matter and some of the scenes are absolutely brutal. There are really no easy answers for Jacob in this. He gets put in a ton of morally ambiguous situations. He fights for survival and these choices that he has to make in these desperate situations. And Casarwalo is not the only great performance in this film. He has some real great actors around him in this with Amari Hardwick, Lake Bell, John Bernthal, and Jeffrey Donovan adding to the overall quality of the film. This one is intense. And if you enjoy gritty crime thrillers, Shot Caller is a solid option. Number 9 is a true story based on the Balan family in The Impossible. This movie follows their picturesque Christmas vacation to Thailand that takes a horrifying turn when the devastating 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami strikes. Maria played by Naomi Watts and Henry played by Ewan McGregor find themselves separated from their three sons Lucas, Simon and Thomas in this chaotic aftermath of the tsunami. Amidst unimaginable destruction and overwhelming odds they fight desperately to reunite their family and just cling to hope. This is another one on this list that makes it because of the powerful performances from Naomi Watts, Ewan McGregor and the super young Tom Holland. They deliver emotionally charged performances, capturing their characters' fear, desperation, and this unwavering love of their family that feels really heartbreaking at times. They do make this a gripping story, drawing you into the emotional journey with a realistic and impactful depiction of the tsunami and its aftermath. And The Impossible, it's an emotional drama based on this true story which elevates the stakes and is well worth a watch for the captivating performances alone. Number 10 on this list is a low budget martial arts masterpiece, The Raid Redemption from 2011, that picks up deep within the slums of Jakarta. A rundown apartment building harbors a notorious drug lord and his army of ruthless criminals. A SWAT team embarks on a simple mission, capture the kingpin. But upon entering the building, things get more complicated and they are ambushed, they're trapped and all kinds of other things. Now cut off, the officers have no choice but to fight floor by floor, facing increasingly skilled and brutal opponents on their way to the top. This film's action sequences are brutal, along with intense and realistic fight choreography, Often compared to classical martial arts films relying on practical effects and stunt work, the lead actors actually underwent months of training to perform their own stunts and fight scenes just to add to that authenticity. 
Despite its simple premise, the film builds suspense and tension effectively as they move up the tower and the danger continuously increases. And the gritty and confined, almost claustrophobic atmosphere that you get put in helps build that tension and intensifies the danger faced by the team. The Raid Redemption is honestly praised by a lot of people. I do warn some of the fight scenes are hardcore, packed with gore and graphic content. So this is not for everyone, but it's perfect for fans of action films, martial arts, or adrenaline pumping thrills. Absolutely worth checking out. Were you rushing or were you dragging? I, I don't know. If you deliberately sabotage my band, I will gut you like a pig. Oh my dear God. Are you one of those single tier people? On his rise to fame, Miles Teller starred in our number 11 pick on this list, and that is Whiplash. This is his highest rated movie on IMDb, and it somehow gets forgotten by many. Andrew, played by Teller, is a talented young drummer who enrolls at this prestigious music conservatory. He catches the eye of Terrence, a ruthless and demanding instructor who pushes Andrew to his absolute limits. Driven by his pursuit of greatness, Andrew sacrifices relationships, physical well-being, and even his own sanity in this attempt to prove himself worthy. Some of the movies on this list stand out because of their unique premise, their characters, the action, or even the humor in them. Well, this one is another that stands out for its excellent performances. Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons deliver electrifying performances, capturing the raw emotions and demands of these characters. Miles Teller even practiced drums for hours a day for five months straight to prepare for this role. This film is also fairly suspenseful. You really find yourself wondering and thinking throughout this film, how far is Andrew actually going to go? So if you enjoyed musical themed dramas, these two actors or just want to watch J.K. Simmons slap Miles Teller for real on screen, Whiplash is definitely worth checking out. Only one thing fighting for order in the chaos. The men and women of the Hall of Justice. My 12th pick is another movie that to some is far from a hidden gem because of its loyal cult following, but it's lesser known to the mainstream compared to most comic book adaptations, and that movie is Dread. This takes place in a dystopian future where we go to Mega City 1. Judges, acting as judge, jury, and executioner, enforce the law. Judge Dredd, a stoic and unwavering judge known for his uncompromising methods, is partnered with the rookie Anderson, this powerful psychic. Assigned to a case at Peach Trees, this 200-story high-rise, they find themselves trapped within by a ruthless crime lord Mama. Like Raid Redemption, Dredd and Anderson must fight their way floor by floor, teeming with crazed criminals with dwindling resources and escalating danger. Carl Urban and Lena Headey's performance in this movie is incredible. Urban as Judge Dredd is dynamic, he's gritty, and despite saying very little when he does speak, it is packed full of intensity, while Headey was this unhinged, ruthless, psychopathic drug lord who is unnerving to even see on screen sometimes. The film's atmosphere feels dirty, grimy, and just an overall gritty vibe. From the sets to the costumes, it immerses you in this dystopian world. It really creates this unique and captivating experience, and this movie is jam-packed full of action. The gunfights and hand-to-hand -hand combat is done extremely well with brutal intensity and fine-tuned choreography. Whether it is the limited marketing or the R rating, Dread turned into more of a cult classic, but it is well worth a watch if you enjoy great dystopian action films. Next, our number 13 movie is super popular in some circles, but seems to go a little unnoticed by the mainstream, and that is The Man From Nowhere. Our main character, Taysik, runs a pawn shop, and his only real connection to the outside world is this bright young girl that hangs around. He watches over her while her mother struggles to make ends meet. Things really kick off when the mother steals and pawns a package of heroin. She gets caught up with this dangerous gang, and then they end up kidnapping her and her daughter. Basic unleashes his hidden skills on a brutal and bloody rampage against this gang to rescue this little girl. Like Raid Redemption and Dread, this film features impressive fight choreography, showcasing Tasek's lethal combat skills in some brutal ways. The action starts small and then it grows throughout the movie, getting more intense, building alongside this narrative. The relationship between this man from nowhere and this little girl adds a layer to the action that feels unique in a way, making the stakes feel very personal and emotional. I will say if you're looking for twists and turns, this might not be for you. It's a pretty simple plot that you need to give time to build because it is slow at moments, especially in the initial setup. But The Man From Nowhere is a story about this unlikely hero turned brutal action star trying to protect someone who's precious to him with tons of action and heart. Growing up, we all want to know the toughest kid in the neighborhood was, right? I want to know the toughest man on the planet is. 
That's what we're gonna find out. My 14th pick is a movie that starred Tom Hardy with Joel Edgerton right between two of his box office staples, The Dark Knight Rises and Inception, and that is Warrior. This is another movie that's probably not hidden to film connoisseurs or die-hard Hardy fans, but performed lackluster at the box office and was somewhat hidden among better marketed titles at the time. We pick up with two estranged brothers who find themselves on a collision course within the brutal world of the MMA. Tommy, this troubled war veteran, and, and Brendan fighting to provide for his family, both enter a mixed martial arts tournament. This sets both of them on this collision course to confront each other and the fractured family dynamic that has haunted them for years. This film has some truly awesome performances from Hardy, Edgerton, and Nick Nolte, really bringing to life these characters' struggles and raw emotions. And I can't say enough nice things about Tom Hardy, I will always find myself loving his characters in movies, just seeming to shine as characters like the Cray Brothers, Eddie Brock, or Eames. In my very non-expert opinion, the fight scenes were great, the cinematography brings you right in on top of these takedowns, and it feels like they do a good job of depicting the world of the MMA and the physicality required in the sport. And it features a few real life MMA fighters, and that always adds to the authenticity and realism of sports movies. But honestly, the best part outside of the one fight scene at the gym, and yes, you'll know what I mean when you see it, the best part is the emotional core of the film, the complex relationship between these brothers and their father. If you enjoy gritty drama, sports movies, or stories about family, Warrior offers a powerful, engaging experience. Well, we're checking out. You are to death the more alive you feel. You're James, aren't you? Yes. It's Nicky Lauda. He's just been signed by Ferrari. This is nobody. My final hidden gem on this list may be a little less hidden gem and more just a 10 year old movie that's a bit more niche and that movie is Rush. This is a film set against the sexy glamorous golden age of Formula One racing back in the 1970s. The true-ish story of the fierce rivalry between English playboy driver James Hunt played by Chris Hemsworth and his methodical Austrian opponent Nicky Lauda played by Daniel Brohl. On and off the track, their contrasting personalities clash throughout the entirety of this film. Hunt lives for the moment while Lauda is calculated and focused on winning. Their rivalry pushes them both to the brink as they battle for dominance in the high stakes world of Formula One. I can honestly say that I love this movie. I am a big fan of racing sports like Formula One and a huge fan of the leads in this film. And then the filmmakers, they do such a good job putting you right in the driver's seat during these racing sequences with incredible cinematography and sound design making it feel even more real. Real. It is truly like having a time machine and a GoPro and going back to the 1970s and riding along with these icons of Formula One. On top of that, these two bring these compelling real world characters to life. Both Hunt and Lauda were well developed and their rivalry is captivating. But what is more fascinating in this film is it goes beyond just the racing and it actually explores the real friendship these competitors came to form throughout their careers. Lastly, director Ron Howard used real Formula One cars and racing footage to create these realistic experiences and to depict the dangers of the sport back in the 1970s. Whether you're a Formula One fan, fans of these leads, or you simply enjoy stories of rivalry and triumph, Rush is a fantastic film, absolutely worth watching. That's going to do it for our list today, everybody. If you enjoyed the list, check out one of our other videos for more recommendations. Take a minute to like, to subscribe to the channel. It really helps us get our recommendations out to others. And I appreciate you hanging out and we'll see you in the next one.